Yeah, just, uh, no. Uh, that's great. This is it. No turning back. Uh, the reason Finn is doing this swim is not for money, but uh, to raise awareness on both sides of the border about pollution and the need to protect the sound and the Strait of Juan de Fuca and the Strait of Georgia. He's really trying to bring attention to the pollution problems and the fact that we need to uh, take action to protect the future. to present to you Mr. Finn Donnelly, the Member of Parliament for the Electoral District of New Westminster, Coquitlam. He has signed the solemn affirmation, he has spoken the solemn affirmation, he has signed the role, and he is ready to claim his right to take his seat. Let the Honourable Member take his seat. We've been asking the Minister to confirm or deny that he's planning to gut the Fisheries Act, but he won't give a straight answer. Last week, two former progressive conservative fisheries ministers called the proposed changes foolish. One called this government, quote, ideological right-wingers with very, very limited understanding, intelligence, or wisdom, unquote. Even conservatives know that eliminating fish habitat protection will set us back decades. So I ask again, is this government going to eliminate habitat protection, yes or no? Mr. Speaker, it's obvious the Conservatives just don't get it. Yesterday, the lack of resource, emergency resources took an absurd turn. Overcrowding in the Royal Columbian Hospital resulted in patients being treated in Tim Hortons. This government needs to order a double-double on the double and wake up and smell the health care crisis in this country. Mr. Speaker, will the Conservatives listen to New Democrats on public health care to ensure folks aren't being treated in a donut shop. Sure, sure. Mr. Speaker, Canada's coastal communities deserve better than that out of touch response. The simple fact is up to 400 staff of the Department of Fisheries and Oceans are on the chopping block. Many are scientists on the front line of conservation and fisheries management. And according to the commissioner, science is more important than ever. Why are the Conservatives firing hundreds of fishery scientists and gutting monitoring programs just when they're needed most? Why are they turning their back on coastal communities? Oh, Minister of Fisheries and Ocean. Out of curiosity, how did you get the name Finn? I mean, I know your parents gave it to you, but is that your full name? It's short for Finbar. Okay. So, yeah, my, uh, I, I sort of swam into my name being a swimmer early in childhood. People always said, how did you get the name Finn? And, uh, you know, how appropriate is that being a swimmer? And, and now in politics, I'm the fisheries critic for the New Democrats. So how, how perfect is Finn? This bill would prohibit the importation of shark fins into Canada and legally ban shark finning in Canadian waters. For those who are unaware, shark finning is the horrific practice of cutting the fins from living sharks and discarding the remaining shark at sea. The sharks then drown, starve to death, or are eaten by other fish alive. It's a brutal practice. 
The best way to curb illegal finning is to stop the international trade in shark fins. Canada can become a world leader in shark conservation and ocean stewardship by adopting this legislation that will protect sharks. I hope all members of this House will support the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The mural behind us today was painted in honour of Rob Stewart, and I cannot think of a more fitting place to make this announcement and to recognize the critical work that he has done to raise public awareness of shark finning. His films have unquestionably inspired many to mobilize against finning around the world. I would like to uh, take a moment to thank my colleagues for their hard work on this, including my fellow MP from British Columbia, Finn Donnelly, for helping to advance this legislation in the House of Commons. Together, we will not only see this ban become law, but we have raised awareness on shark finning across our country. My name is Sarah. I am from Almer, BC, and my hero is from Tony, which I'm going to tell you about. I could have never imagine swimming up this in this dirty water. It's so fluted, it would be so tiring just to do that. I couldn't imagine doing that for that long. Now, I hope, I hope you know why I chose Finn Dolly as my hero. Thank you. Hello, I'm William Shatner, and uh, I'd like just to tell you something that's really important to all of us. The British Columbia, especially in the Fraser River, salmon, are dying. Please join me in uh, saving the salmon by signing the Save the Salmon postcards and send it to your representative. Together, we can win this fight. The Honorable Member for Port Moody, Coquitlam. Mr. Speaker, I may have been a reluctant politician, but I quickly realized the importance of changing public policy. I've always believed if we develop an ethic of care and stewardship for the planet and our environment, that ethic will naturally extend to all living things, including our neighbors. I brought that approach to my 17 years of public service, 10 years federally, seven years locally, through six campaigns. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, this job is special, demanding, but amazing. I've had the good fortune to meet world leaders, national figures, celebrities, and community heroes. Mr. Speaker, I've had some proud moments. I've led effective campaigns like banning the importation of shark fins to Canada, which hopefully will become law very soon. Mm -hmm. And my wild salmon campaign, where Captain Kirk, William Shatner, <laughs> join me to save wild salmon. <laughs> <laughs> By transitioning West Coast salmon farms to closed containment. Mm. Needs to, happen. Yeah. to celebrating a win seeing the Kitsilano Coast Guard Station finally reopen, to rewarding casework. Just one example, Karen in my office worked hard for 10 years, my entire career as an MP, to reunite Kabando with his wife, Emirates. They were separated during the Congo Civil War in 1998. Emirates moved to Canada saved enough money from her cleaning job to visit at the refugee camp where he was in 2014. And finally, in 2018, the family was reunited 20 years later in Canada. Wow. Thank you, Canada. Yeah. Yeah. But through it all, Mr. Speaker, it has been a team effort.
leave this place without saying thanks to my NDP colleagues, friends, staff, volunteers, family, and especially my wife, Linda. Thank you to MPs from all parties who I've worked with over the years, the guards, clerks, and all the staff on the Hill. And thank you to the people of Port Moody, Coquitlam, and Moore and Belcarra. It has truly been an honor to serve. Wow. Okay, good job. I'm good. Let's go. Here we go. Yep.